I am your host, Matt Forte. We are here live at the Build Studio in New York City. Man, I freaking loved this movie. I'm super excited to talk to our guests, so I'm going to jump right on in, all right? The House of Tomorrow is the highly anticipated movie adaptation of Peter Bagnani's best-selling novel of the same name. The film tells the story of two outsiders looking to connect. Sebastian, a sheltered teen raised inside a geodesic dome, and Jared, a chain-smoking, punk-obsessed 16-year-old with a heart transplant. You throw in a Bible-banging single dad doing his best, a, a Buck Minster Fuller-obsessed nana, and a teenage sister just trying to find her place amongst all of this, and you got one hell of a movie, my friends. Now, like most coming-of-age stories, it's at times really funny, it gets a little heavy, but at the end of the day, it's just a super honest film with an incredible cast, and I really, really enjoyed it. So, like I said, pretty stoked to talk to our guests here in just a moment. From The House of Tomorrow, I have director Peter Lavolsi is here, and stars Maude Apatow, Alex Wolf, Asa Butterfield. How do you guys feel about that, huh? That's pretty exciting. Right? You sound pretty excited. All right, we're going to bring him out in just a second. But before we do, we're going to take a quick look at the trailer. So Luke, man, do me a favor. Let's go ahead and run that clip. People say to me, I wonder what it'd be like to be on a spaceship. You don't really realize you all live aboard a beautiful little spaceship called Earth. Hey there. I'll be down in a minute. This is the St. Peter's Lutheran Youth Group. I'm Sebastian. Welcome to the future. That's my Nana. She says there's the traditional way to live, and then there's the dynamic independently, the way Buckminster Fuller did. Every time man makes a new experiment, he always learns more. That old lady's like your overlord. She's my guardian, and she made sure I stayed on the right path. Wow. What is it that you listen to on those? You better prepare yourself, dude. Sebastian, what are you mumbling? I just, it's nothing. Sorry, Nana. Hey, Sebastian. My sister Meredith, you can probably guess she totally sucks. I want to know more about punk. Take this. He's a bit. Yeah. You have to sing that. Where did you run off to? I was with my friends. Why do you take so much medicine? Or someone else's heart. You could get overworked. Why don't you let me decide what my heart can handle? Are you worried about dying? Hell no. We gotta start a band. What are you guys doing? Please don't tell Dad. We're playing a gag. A gig. Right. A gig. We're the rash, mother Whoa. You. you can't keep them locked up from the world. This place could be sick for an overnight. What is an overnight? It's like a party where people sleep over. Well, Bucky, if you steered us into the future, what would the future be? I'm going to change the world. You're so weird. All right, ladies and gentlemen, making them seem a lot of noise, please. I got Peter, Asa, Alex, Maud, make some noise. Kind of house of tomorrow, please, because this movie is awesome. Guys, welcome to Build. Thank you so much for being here. Thank yeah. you. Congratulations. You made an awesome thing. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah that's nice. such a great poster, by the way. That yeah, is, that is a great poster. So good. Yeah, it is an amazing. Everything about this movie has your is pretty face good. on it. That's yeah, good. yeah, that's, that's all it is. Actor. <laughs> yeah, it's a large photo of yourself that you have to sit next to for the next 30 minutes. I hope you don't mind, guys. We tried to make this very uncomfortable for you. Yeah. So um, we're going to jump in. I really want to talk about this flick, as I've said many times over, and we'll continue to say it is wonderful. But before we get to any of that, the beauty of Build is we've got a little bit of time. So I want to start with how I always start, which is just how are you guys doing? How are you, how, how you feeling? How's it going? How's New York? How are you? Jump it's in. It's good. It's yeah. going really good. We've uh, just been... Hanging out today, me and Asa are staying at my house, or my yeah, actually my parents' house. We're living in there, and we're having fun. 
We create. I, I, I don't live in New York. So he doesn't live in New York, so he's staying here. I'm staying here. But I love it here. I love it every time I come. Ace bought a bunch of dye, like a bunch of dye thing, and uh, I think it's dice. dye. Dices, dice, dice. 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 Yeah. Um, and we uh, <laughs> we made up uh, we made up a little game last night. Yeah. Some fun. Yeah, we're rolling it, making up rules left and right. Dice slaps. It was called dice slaps. You slap each other. If you get two like of the same number, you stand up and. If you do this really quick, and then uh, if whoever does it quickest slaps the other person, this is sweeping the nation. This game, it's yeah, still viral. <laughs> we're, we're not, we're not selling it, but honestly, we, uh, we it's a pretty good for, game. We were playing <laughs> this for like three <laughs> hours. Say never. Let's and never then we stopped laughing in the beginning. It's like, oh, this is so fun. By the end, it was like, oh, come on, I want to get two threes. <laughs> you get like really into the rules that you've just invented by the end of exactly. the game. You're getting into like heated debates. Like, yeah. it, when we're talking multi-sided die, like not like a six-sided dice, like oh, the, like the, it's the, varied. We had we had a twenty-sided dice. Twenty. It's we had a bunch. It's like, it's like D and D dice. I, I bought some for Dungeons <laughs> and Dragons, Dragons. but yeah. I wasn't gonna play Dungeons and Dragons with Asa. <laughs> What what if he just what if this whole thing what if he just tricked you into playing Dungeons and Dragons but included slapping? That was it. He just, then I'd slap him really 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 hard. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, Maude, I believe I saw, were you and Asa at the New York Stock Exchange yesterday? Yes, we were. That's new? Or is that, uh, is that one of your usual haunts when you come to New York? Oh, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Uh, we do that all the time. Always stop. Were you by. following them in a car? How yes, do you uh, I keep a 30-foot distance radius at all times just to be prepared. I said that. You have to do that. Yeah, well, that's right. It was court appointed. It yeah. used to be. <laughs> what, what, what was that like? What were you guys doing over there? What was that experience? I saw you had a gavel. That's fun. Um, <clears throat> it was really weird. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't know. Really, I don't know what stocks are really. Like yeah. nobody in there does. And like everyone's like shouting, and then there's the, there's the bell, and yeah. and then we did a uh, like a talk show. Yeah. And there were people talking about stocks, <laughs> and we're talking about the movie, which is great. But it was. It was, right a, it, was a, it was a strange place it's to, really to, to, weird. to do yeah, it. Yeah, it was. It was. We weren't expecting that. We walked in. We're like, where are we right now? What's yeah. happening? But yeah, very very cool. All right. Well, just so you know, about five to ten minutes in, we do bring in about thirty extras. They stand behind you and scream about stocks. That's normal. That's what we that. do in New York. Helps That's just focus. how. Yeah. Uh, Pete, I want to start with you, man. Yeah. Let, let's let's get into some of the stuff. I'm sure you've answered this a million times, but I, I, I want to ask you. I want to know. Uh, what what brought you to this story, to this book? What was it you were excited to explore? How did it all start, man? Um, the book uh, was brought to me by my friend Tarek Karam, who's a producer on the film, and he went to college with the author of the novel, um, The House of Tomorrow, which our movie's based on. Um, and immediately reading it, I was hooked into the story between Asa and Alex's character, Jared and Sebastian, this friendship that they kind of have over the course of the film, through creating music together. And, that, and I really connected with that just in high school, making films with friends and that sharing that kind of creative collaboration with people. Um, but the other really interesting component of the story was introducing me to this guy, Buckminster Fuller, who was kind of a big deal in the 60s and uh, had this sort of green living, before that was even a phrase, mentality. And um, he popularized these things called geodesic domes, which Sebastian's character lives in, and they give tours of this dome, he and his grandmother, played by Ellen Burstyn. And um, what was sort of crazy and what really got the movie itself going was sending the script to Ellen, uh, just because I love her work, and then finding out uh, that she actually knew Buckminster Fuller. And that was just like one of many things that just started to happen to the film where we just got lucky, magic, whatever you want to call serendipity, whatever you want to call it. And she yeah. came on and then kind of went from there. Yeah, that kind of blew my mind when I was doing the research after yeah. the fact. I didn't realize, when you see archive footage in a film, you always think like, oh, they made that look old really well. They did right. a great job of reproducing that old footage. But no, that was that's yeah. her footage because she knew Buckminster Fuller. That's, yeah. That's pretty mind-blowing. Yeah, I sent the script, and two weeks later I got an email saying, hey, did you know Ellen knew Bucky? She wants to meet me meet you and we were, we were both kind of like well we have to make this movie and she's she's great she's a big part of the film it's pretty nuts i like the most i, I didn't know about buckminster fuller i'm assuming did anybody else on the panel here did you guys know about uh, bucky before doing not, this not film? until i was introduced to this story yeah and it's pretty wild because of how like a big deal this guy yeah. was when you think about it yeah. the most i knew like i knew epcot center yeah yeah bro. we know we know kind of geodesic know domes as exactly. things but not who who made them popular yeah no pretty wild um all right let's let's go down the line i want to start with modmo walker ray back in here but like how'd you get involved with the film and, and what were you excited about when, when, when you kind of got latched on um yeah so i just i auditioned i got sent the script and like read it and loved it and i think like i don't know it's nice to see like such great teenage characters yeah. like that's what i love so much about it and yeah i auditioned for it and it worked out 
What about you, Alex? Uh, similar thing. I I um, I told Peter this. I uh, had just gotten back from doing another movie, and I had a graduation party. I was graduating high school, and I had it. Um, and I got it like the day of, and they had to get it by the next day. And it was like a very quick thing. And I had to do it really quickly before I went to this graduation party. And I was like, oh man. And I, and I read the script really quick and I was like, man, I really love this. It's too bad. I'm not going to be able to get it because I have to do this really quickly. And um, so I just like th did it really quickly. I sent it out and I sort of thought, okay, well, I'm not going to hear anything about that, but what a great character, what a great script and everything. And then, you know, I heard something a little bit later and, uh, um, and, and I talked to yeah we had a Skype me and Peter like talked on the phone about it and he said could you maybe record yourself playing because I'm a musician and I told him you know that I'm obsessed with punk I've I, you know been obsessed with the Clash and Replacements and um, Bad Brains and Dead Kennedy since you know I was very young so I said he said something like can you record maybe yourself playing a song or something maybe in the next few days and I was like sure and then I hung up and I recorded myself I just learned a song really quick recorded myself and then sent it to him within like. 15 minutes I think he thought I was a psychopath <laughs> and then he texted me yeah you got the part and uh, it was pretty cool that was awesome yeah hey so what about you um again kind of I mean I got sent the, the scenes I did in fact I didn't even have the script I think when I first sent off a tape I was sent sides for both Jared and Sebastian and I got like they said uh have a read see which character you kind of lean toward um and uh naturally I I like I don't know what it is. I don't know whether it's my face, but I always play these kind of weird characters. <laughs> and so I can You're weird. Of, You're super it's weird. No. Yeah. Um, so I, uh, yeah, I sent off a tape. And um, again, I mean, you see, as an actor, you kind of send off a lot of things and you don't hear back for a, a lot of things. And I'm um, pretty quickly, uh, Pete, you, uh, we got in contact. And yeah, we Skyped as well. This was only maybe about a month before we started shooting yeah. it, it all kind of happened very quickly yeah basically it was just me seeing these guys on tape loving what they did and then just really talking to them to make sure they they understood the character and we in a way that i felt like they i wanted them to and it was beyond expectation they they taught me about the characters and uh, the characters they all played and i think um it, if someone's like right for the role you kind of know in in a really brief time and that conversation about the, the bigger s story and their everyone's passion for who they were playing was just very evident on that first conversation we had. So it was very easy to go into what was a pretty crazy fast shoot and just trusting all these guys with what, what they all brought to the table. And I thought it was kind of cool that me and Asa got sent they gave us the option. Do you want to uh, you want to go up for Sebastian or Jared? And both of us were like, Oh, I, I knew for sure. I was like, Oh, the the found punk the kid with the you know, whatever. And, and I was cigarettes and the, yeah, I was living like, in a dome <laughs> with his grandma. I was like, Yeah, that's me. Yeah, <laughs> I'm dome kid. That feels right. That feels right. What was there something though? Looking at that, like you, you see that type of character, and even watching it, it's like, yeah, I, this is different than what I've seen you do before. But you do tend to get these characters like that outsider rediscovering the world through fresh eyes. Was there something Asa, that you saw that you were like, all right, I've, this is similar, but but there's something new here that I haven't done before that I want to do with Sebastian? Um, I think it was it was the kind of discovery of himself through music and like punk music in particular, which I think you're bad at until I, until I met Alex, I didn't really know that much about punk. I, I'd heard a few songs, but, um, pretty much when, when we met, even before we, we'd met and we had gotten FaceTime and we were talking about it and we'd like, we made the movie. We were just listening to punk music all day. Like we didn't listen to anything else. And he taught me the bass guitar, which I've always kind of wanted to learn. And I've always like looked at bass guitar players. And I'm like, Oh my God. I was like the coolest instrument. Um, and so we, we did all the music live. And that's something I always like to say is because that never happens usually. I mean, even if they're playing it in a studio, there's some overdubbing. There was none, absolutely none. We did it all live, all the music, all the scenes of the music, the concert at the end that we just learned the song. And we actually played a concert um, in Minnesota. We like booked a concert at a bar. We just asked, like, can we play here? And we like brought our it's equipment. It's Minnesota, so they're like, yeah, great. <laughs> they're like, are you sure? Sure. Are you sure you want to? How much um, money do you want? Yeah. yeah. Um, we love and Minnesota. And they were, uh, and it was really amazing. Me and Asa just, we played a five song set and we wrote like two or three punk songs. And we, uh, yeah, and we played. It was pretty awesome. Was that your first time playing music live in front of a crowd before, Asa? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> it was. I mean, I, I, I love music and I've, I've played a bit and I play piano, but it's, I've never performed 
music for a, for a crowd on a, on a stage. It was, yeah, that was new for me. But we had to, we had a lot of fun, and it went well. I mean, there were like oh, really well. I, we sounded like pretty up. tight. Yeah. We sounded pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Punk's a pretty, pretty forgiving good. genre too. As long as long as you're really feeling it and you're very genuine and honest in what you're playing, yeah, it it, it reads well in the crowd. It like resonates with the audience. So it's it's a pretty exciting type of music to go up and play live. That's that's for sure. You know, oh, we're wearing the shirts. So just... I noticed. Well, I want to talk about the band. There's a lot that we're going to get to, uh, but really quick, since we're in this zone, um, w- let's talk about the name of the band really quick, because The Rash is a pretty solid name. Like, yep. that's, that's a hell of a band name. How, how many different names did you guys run through before we arrived? These guys the had Rash? a whole... Do you want to well, see some of that? I mean, The Rash was from the book, and that, that was always going to be the name, but we, we, have the... we have a scene in the film where we're like coming up with band names, and we actually wrote a whole list... And uh, uh, this is just an unrehearsed thing we're doing right now. You guys have uh, this right just now. <laughs> we do. This is taken like I've got a picture of the page that we wrote it all, all right, on. I'm gonna have to look on yours. Um, <laughs> so we're just gonna read out a few of them. Some of them, uh, some of them are some of them are great. Some of them not so great. The process, the creative um, process. Yeah, you go. go all right, razor burn. <laughs> the cans. We've got the uh, the, cans. the the dome fucks. The dome fucks. The dome fucks. <laughs> um, the nail biters. Scar with a K. <laughs> hey, J- hang on. Do you spell it with a K or is it literally, quote, scar with a K, end quote? No, it's S K A R. Keep up with another one. Keep no, up. Will you keep up, more. please? Will you listen? That'd be great. Um, <laughs> the Geese Balls. <laughs> Little Secret in the Dead Bunny. <laughs> chicken. <laughs> chicken Jizz. Um, <laughs> J- JJ Death. Sir Dicks a Lot. Before Skin. <laughs> Uh, I mean, there's loads. We, the we fuck keep you. Going, but um, some of them are really. In it. We're like skimming over the really. We really are. Ones. Wait. Bloody bloody strawberry. Um, um, we, can't, we can't say that one. Anal. <laughs> just just the word. All right, that's enough. Yeah, anal was. I love. We'll end on anal. It's always good to end on anal. I love that you skipped over the inappropriate ones, but we still got <laughs> yeah. chicken. They juice. got so much worse. <laughs> and before <I> skin. <laughs> they yeah. got really bad. Can I? Well, that begs a follow-up question. There's uh, a follow-up question to that. No, uh, <laughs> all right, so all right. so you guys got really into that zone as a band. Uh, is is the songwriting <laughs> process that we see on? I'm going to tie it back to the film. Not is good. the songwriting process that we see on screen, uh, Alex? Is that reflective at all of what your process looks like when you're writing music? Yeah, I mean, it's it's. I think. I think Peter did an amazing job of writing in the script, but I think he was really smart in letting. I kind of said like let's just let these me guys do improvise. It. I, we sort stuff. of improvised yeah. it. I yeah. sort of said let's do it. So I think particularly there's a scene where I, when we're first starting to play together, that to me is I'm really proud of just the the musical accuracy of that because I don't think that happens in movies. It's a lot of times it's like they sit down and all of a sudden they sound like Beethoven and I, you know it just that yeah. sounds. But this one it's like I'm like no no play that. I'm really teaching him how to do it in yeah. the same bossy and way. He that genuinely was. I was like and, yeah, was and what, and what was it. fun is we shot the, all those scenes where they play. Every scene where they play music together was shot in order to match Ace's learning along the way. So. They they have a big performance in the in the in the movie and that's like the last thing we shot in the in the film and it's kind of great that we got to see you guys learn on screen and, that, and at the that, end like when I say I say like I changed the song but it's the same chord progression we were playing earlier so it's totally you believe it that and it's very simple and I'm like GGGF I, I feel like you can trace it back if you just watch it for musical accuracy I think it's I think it's pretty good yeah I think it adds up. We um we haven't talked nearly enough about uh, how awesome Maud was in this film. By the way, I want to go yeah. to you for a second. Yeah, Agreed. we could applaud. By the way, go yes. ahead. Yes, I'm gonna hold. Yes. <laughs> so uh, you play Meredith in the film. You got you have an, a, a phenomenal scene uh, about midway through with Asa, where you guys are in the hospital, and and we sort of get to see uh, more of Meredith and kind of learn about uh, peel the curtain back, you know, revealing layers and layers. And I was curious, as an actor, do you get nervous going into a scene like that where, where you've got to tap into that, just that raw vulnerability and, and sort of and really open yourself up? Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Moving I, on. I, I want to know if... No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Go. No, for sure. I mean, I mean, I, I you try not to think about it too much because yeah. then it doesn't... If, I mean, it, if you overthink it, it won't feel as real. You can't be in your head when you do stuff like that. 
that, I guess. I don't know, but I'm always nervous about everything. So I'm, yeah, I'm always nervous. <laughs> is that, would you say that's kind of your approach in general going in is you try not to get too much in your own head about it because you, you just want to... That's, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm always like trying to figure out how to get out of my own head and like my life. In, in so life. <laughs> I'm still figuring that out. Um, what, what were the three of you, talk about working with a, uh, a cleanly shaven Nick Offerman. What was... <laughs> He is, he is phenomenal. Every, this film is perfectly cast, by the way. So Thank kudos uh, to you. that. Um, but, but he's so wonderful in this movie as well. And you guys have such a great relationship and a genuine relationship with him. Uh, what, what was it like working on that with him? Did it, did it come immediately? Did you, did he immediately feel like a father figure or did you have to work on that vibe? I think he did. Yeah. He, he was like, we were just like, so we were in Minnesota together, like at a hotel in the middle of nowhere. And like, he went swimming with us at night and like hung out with us and like really took the time to talk to us and like treat us. Like we went to lunch and stuff like he was he's awesome and he's hilarious you guys had way more fun time with nick offerman than i did it was like i know i had a great time working with yeah him. I, you hated him you i just mean him. no i just mean like Deep you had up. actual like hangout time i was like okay we gotta do this thing this is just like yeah. it was work be like, they were always like swimming in pools and like going out to lunch and yeah, he'd come into work in the morning you'd say son <laughs> you have to shut your mouth <laughs> That was a spot on, good. Nick Offerman. By <laughs> good. good. Yeah, he uh, he was here once a while ago, and he is the nicest the guy in the he's world. The oh my god! Yeah, he's Such a the good shame guy. he can't be here. Hi, Nick. Hi, if you're Nick. watching this. Yeah, he's, we love he's an you. avid watcher. He's a big fan of this. Yeah, show. yeah. No, he was telling us. Bill. Yeah, he doesn't he doesn't miss a single episode. Uh, <laughs> we've we've got to uh, we've got to throw it over to audience Q and A. We've got some microphones in the room, so I promise we can do that. I'm a man of my word. We're going to take some of those, but I apologize in advance if I jump in with more questions because it's really a treat having these guys here. First one looks like it's in the back. Hi, how are you guys doing? Good, thank you. Right. Yeah. Um, I was wondering since you guys have such like a fun dynamic, just all of you sitting together now, what was it like on set? Nothing like it. We had to mend a lot of wounds after the movie. Um, and so this is a lot of family therapy together. And now we're in a good place. Right, gang? No, we had, we had so much fun. When you're working, it was a really short shoot, 18 days, which is, like, incredibly, like, tight. So we, it was an intense shooting period when we were actually there. And, and when, you're, when you're there on set with people and it's, you're working, you form these bonds very quickly. And we spent all day with each other hanging out and kind of relying on each other to really kind of make this movie as good as it can be and um and we've all became amazing friends because of it um so we're, we're lucky because it's i don't think it's always that easy or that yeah guys <laughs> that's a great question thank you we've uh, got a couple more and next one is right over here hey uh do you think you will all enjoy living inside a geodesic dome yeah, what was the dome like? The dome was cool. Yeah. Like it was like um, th we were shooting in a few different places. Uh, uh, it's not called Domeville, but that's what we ended up calling it. Um, uh, and uh, but the the couple um, Dennis and uh, Tessa and Tessa uh, who let us stay in their stay in, and use their domes. Um, they were beautiful, and they're in the forest. So you look out these big glass like windows, and you're out there and. Yeah, honestly, I would love like a holiday out there. I think it would be great. It looks super cozy. Like, I had like, like the best night. Up. I slept when I was location scouting. I spent the night in the dome. They they let me stay there, and I slept like had the best night of sleep I think I've ever had in my life. It was incredible because it's so quiet. You're in the yeah. woods. It's like sealed. You could up. talk into like one side of the dome, and you can hear it downstairs. Yeah, it's so crazy. It's yeah, wild. What, yeah. But I always just picture Ellen as like you know Ace's non commissioned officer, just being there and hanging out. And I'll never be able to look at a dome the same. It'll always be the movie for me. Your, your perspective on domes has been changed forever. Yeah. What was it? What was the sound like when you guys brought in the, the instruments and you played music inside a space like that? A Amazing. lot of people record in dome. Like it's yeah. domes are it's like the ideal sound sort of. So it, playing sounded absolutely amazing. I credit a lot of how good it sounded in the movie to the dome because all the sound was super perfectly reflective and yeah. uh, that last the last show which we did is the last two days of filming the it was really was we shot it all night and it was, it was one of the hardest things i've ever had to do like both of us i think everyone was like really put like putting their hearts out into this performance and it was it was like a whole new world like this is our moment on aladdin's carpet yeah. in the dome <laughs> like giving it everything 
um, and the, the dome. <laughs> yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> It was. You guys almost like you were exhausted by it. Yeah. Yeah. And then we flew straight from, uh, we rapped. <laughs> I'm just going to throw it out there. I told him to say Aladdin's carpet. In the you, did, you had secret <laughs> phrases because you said non commissioned officer, which, what is that? You had to, but they gave each other buzzwords. Mine, mine was so clumsy. Well, we have words too, but we're not going to tell that you. That was totally. amazing. Well, that was here. amazing. That was a round of applause. Yeah, worthy. That me, was please. amazing. I'm just sitting here. Aladdin's carpet. That was really fantastic. And I'm thinking to myself, like, it's fascinating. They develop a little language together when they do these right. projects. It's just like these words mean something. Like, I, I, no, no, you're just making bets beforehand. Yeah. If you can fold <laughs> it into the conversation. That's yeah. Well, kudos, because it made a lot of sense. Yeah. I was really transported by that moment. Uh, thank you. That was amazing. Thank well you. done, sir. Uh, we've got time for how many lists? Okay, one more? I'm going to do one more. I've got a microphone right here. Hi, guys. Um, so this question's open for everyone. Um, do you have any kind of favorite coming-of-age stories, books, movies, whatever, that you kept in mind when making the film? Maude, keep in mind, I'm going to listen very closely for any weird phrases you fold into your answer now. I just want you to know that. Um, oh. Go first. Okay. Yeah, I think so. I, oh my god, there's so many, I don't know. Um, we'll come back. Pete's ready, we'll come back. To, we'll come, I'll, yeah. I'll give you, I'll we'll give you some, buy you some time. Yeah. Um, there's a great movie called Breaking Away that I, that I love um, about uh, kids growing up in Bloomington, Indiana. And, uh, and I think we may have talked about it a little bit, but you guys probably never watched it. You're like, yeah, that sounds great, and then never watched it. And then... Um, you watch it? Did you? That's awesome. Um, and uh, Bottle Rocket, I think, is great. Yeah. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. These are all good ones. Stand like, by me. We stand by me. About. Freaks and Geeks. Stand by me. All good. Last Last movie, but Paris. great. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, you seem to all be in agreement on Pete's answer. Yeah, agreed. Last Tango in yeah. Paris. Last. <laughs> yeah. It was a really formative film for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Watching that when you were growing up. Feel good movie. All right. <laughs> That's one way to describe it. All right. Uh, I'm going to let you go in a second, uh, but I want to just run right down the line really quick. Uh, Pete, what's coming up next for you, man? Uh, just writing. Yeah. Furiously writing and hopefully going to make another movie soon. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Asa, what are you working on, man? What's what's next? I am uh, I'm not working on anything like currently. I'm at home, kind of taking some time off, which is nice. I got some things coming out this year, which is exciting. Um, uh, a movie, a British kind of comedy horror thing that's coming out at the end of the year, which is absolutely nuts. It's like Simon Pegg, Nick Frost team, um, Shaun of the Dead kind of a vibe. Oh, so that that will be interesting. Yeah, it should be a laugh. That's yeah. very exciting. You got a lot going on. What's going on? Um, yeah, I have the uh, this movie Hereditary. Yeah. Uh, comes out June 8th, this A24 movie with Gabriel Byrne and Tony Collette. Um, that is a truly upsetting movie. Um, <laughs> disturbing. Uh, I have this movie, Dude, coming out on Netflix, uh, uh, where I do a uh, sex scene, which will be fun to watch. Uh, that comes out on Netflix, April 20th. Uh, I just Thanks for the I, warning on that. Yeah, no, I was trying to warn. <laughs> I'm trying to warn everyone if you want to see it. Um, and then uh, I just directed and uh, starred in a movie I wrote um, called The Cat in the Moon um, in New York, and that was cool. And He's a talented yeah. guy. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Working on music, too, while you're doing all that? Yeah, and then me and my brother are about just to make a new record. Stuff. Yeah. Cool, man. Just making music as well. Oh, you just, make, just, yeah, just, you know, throwing it on the fire. Busted. Maude, what, what have you been up to? What do you got coming out? Um, I've been in school, but I have a, something coming out later this year, Assassination Nation. I'm not sure when yet, but, but keep an eye we'll know out. soon, yeah. For sure. I hear that movie's amazing, too. Yeah. Really, yeah. Awesome. It's amazing. Well, uh, guys, I, I can't say it enough. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's been totally awesome having you here. An absolute treat, and, and I, I really love the film. And you guys are going to love it, too. It's in theaters April 27th, The House of Tomorrow. Everybody, please make a ridiculous amount of noise. And join me in thanking Peter Lavosi, Asa Butterfield, Alex Wolf, and Maude Apatow for being here. Thank you guys so, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank